All right, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the Stivers Show. This is uh, Justin Stivers. Very excited for my guest today, uh, Carlos Gutierrez. I've known Carlos for uh, I don't know how many years, a couple of years now. I think <laughs> several years now. Um, and and great to to reconnect with him. And Carlos is well known in the community, broker associate uh, with Compass right now. Um, you know, but in his that's his day job, I guess. But when he's not doing that. He's a, uh, you know, avid motorcyclist, <laughs> ninja, basically he's a ninja, uh, <laughs> former, former president, I think uh, residential president of the Miami Association of Realtors and probably future uh, governor of Florida. I'm not sure. So <laughs> but anyways, Carlos, man, great to have you on. <laughs> Thank you for the fantastic intro, Justin. It's an honor to be on here with you. I know we did uh, our videos a couple of years ago and uh, it's great to, to be with you again. Yeah, awesome. You you do a lot. You do a lot of great videos and a lot of, a lot of great content. Um, before we get into all of that, I always like to start. You know, I know, like I said, probably people watching know who you are, but um, you know, who are you and, and what do you do? Well, I am a real estate broker. This is my seventeenth year in real estate, and uh, those seventeen years have been a combination of experience on the mortgage side, um, buying and selling properties for myself. I flipped my first property for profit at the age of twenty five, and I knew. It was real estate for me forever going forward after that. Um, and these days, um, after a period of managing, I am back in uh, the agent uh, brokerage side of it and uh, just working on sales, just working on uh, my niche, my specialty, which is working with attorneys and their clients uh, who have legally complex situations where the solution is to sell a home. And right now, I'm temporarily very laser focused on growing the probate arm of my practice and, um, and getting that kind of on, on autopilot and growing it to the next level. Yeah, so we'll start there because obviously uh, probate kind of up my, up my alley. Um, Absolutely. But, <laughs> but wh so why probate? Why, I'd be interested to know why, why did you kind of focus in on that? That's actually a really good question. Um, my first job out of college was with Wells Fargo Financial. Um, so we did some mortgages, some lines of credit, some business to business loans. They had a, a program where people would come in who owned homes, but needed help. And, uh, we would do consolidations. We would help them pay off their debt. We, you know, it, it basically launched a career of helping people through empathy and just listening. And then once they're done explaining, you know, everything that every, any hardship they may have gone through then we come in with solutions and help. So I've carried that empathetic approach throughout my entire career and um, very detail oriented and very you know structured and regimented. So that type of real estate practice really suits my personality. Um, through, like I said, through the empathy, the attention to detail, keeping processes in place. Um, and it, it was just a natural fit. Now that's, that's why I'm drawn to it. And that's why I do well at it. From a business perspective, um, you know, all all my referrals that come from attorneys are need based sales. Somebody's getting divorced and they can't buy out the other uh, person. You know, they have to sell. They inherit a property that is not. They don't want to rent. They don't want to become a landlord. They need to sell it. So the need based part of it is a great business reason, but helping people has just really been uh, a skill I've developed over the last twenty years. I would say. So I, you know, I do a lot of um, presentations to realtors on probate, and one of the questions, you know, I always tell them at the end, you know, their question, their, one of their main questions is, well, how do we, how do we get probate listings? Um, and I really, I, unless you know, you don't have to give away your secret if there is one, <laughs> but you know, I, in my opinion, I think for most probate listings from a realtor, it's really probably from attorneys right it's probably from you know referrals there might be you know maybe you can buy some lists and whatnot but that's still going to come from an attorney maybe the personal representative um, as an attorney who also you know gets a lot of business from attorneys i know that attorneys are very difficult to work with a lot of times um so i don't know i guess maybe maybe you know how how is that is that a challenge for you i mean trying to get in with 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 attorneys and would you say that's kind of where you know you you get a lot of this probate business from yeah i mean i think you you hit the nail on the head um so that is the foundation relationships and trust and i think more than anything um when you're first starting to build relationships with refer potential referral partners you want to offer something of value so that's the approach i've taken from day one of offering something to my attorney referral partners that would help their practice, help get them exposure. When you and I first met, it was to do one of these videos. 
a couple of years back. And I think that worked out great for both of us. Um, and so that's just kind of how I've, I've, I've carried it forward and um, laid a foundation, like I said, with relationships. But then as consumer behaviors start to shift, we have uh, end users and, and, and buyers, I should say, uh, of properties and people who want to sell properties. They want things yesterday. So they want to click a button like they do on Amazon. They want to click a button like they do on Uber. Uh, they want to, you know, now we can order takeout with just a click of a button. So I think the mindsets are shifting towards I'm going to take my time and interview the best agents and then pick the ones who have the most experience for selling, you know, my parents' property in Florida when they're in New Jersey uh, to clicking on, you know, links on the web, getting more information, doing a little bit of their own research, and then maybe that will lead them to, to make a decision. And that's kind of what I'm working on. The, you're, you're right. The foundation has always been relationships with referrals. But um, I'm also working on a shift towards digital so that I can go um, instead of one to one like you and I do, maybe we can go one to many. I also have taught classes which are uh, um, to realtors to basically, I am uh, sharing my secrets with my competitors, but it's in order to elevate the profession and uh, the, the level of professionalism in our industry. I've also taught uh, similar classes to attorneys and they get CLE credits for it. They get continuing legal education credits and um, there's typically on some topic that will help them grow and they see that value and then, you know, it's called guru marketing. They see you as an expert, they trust you and, and, and uh, you know, you grow your relationship that way. I think, I mean, yeah, I love, I love all that stuff. I think that's, that's huge. And, and to, to your point about, I mean, we were talking a little bit before and, and we'll, we'll shift here in a second, you know, talking about tech and, and how people, the consumer does want access right now. And where before, you know, they were maybe going to ask, you know, 10 different people and get the best referral and then interview them. I'm, I'm surprised even in my own business, how trusting a lot of people are. I mean, from, you know, my business, I've been even pre COVID, I don't do in-person consultations with the client. I do all of my I do all of my consultations telephonic. I've probably never met in person ninety five percent of my clients. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it it almost you know at this point I'm used to it, but it's still thinking about it. It's you know I'll get someone and, and they'll hire us and and they've never met me and it might not have been a referral. So I think people are a lot more a lot more trusting. That being said, you and myself we we put a lot of stuff out there, so we're not if they want to look us up and maybe they do, you know, we're active, we give presentations, we're on different, you know, organizations and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I think, you know, maybe shifting a little bit, do you think that's still essential in, in this tech, you know, th these times of COVID and, and, and tech and all of that? Yeah, I think this is definitely going to create a shift um, even farther and faster towards the, the technology side. And that's great, it's interesting, I didn't know that about your practice, that most of your intakes are done by, by phone or virtually. Um, luckily, being in such a tech forward environment, um, as I have been, is one of the most tech forward uh, brokerages in the country, if not the most, with 500 uh, engineers on staff. So the technology is amazing uh, at Compass. Uh, so we've been basically set up from the beginning to be able to do uh, virtual tours, which are not just pictures that are in a photo carousel. It's an actual tour as if you're walking through the property in person. Um, we can do listing presentations on Zoom. So we've adapted extremely quickly. The consumer, I don't think, is ready yet. So if you own a million dollar property, you may not be ready to interview the person on Zoom and feel comfortable with them. Maybe you want that face-to-face -face connection. And the same on the buyer side. You know, you uh, let's say you're buying a, even if you're buying a car, not even a house, you can look at it online. You start, you know, your search there, you gather information, but you want to sit in it. You want to feel it just like in a house. You, you know, most of the decisions are made about buying a house when you walk into it and you feel it. So, um, that will take a little bit of adjustment, but I think eventually we'll we keep going towards, uh, like I said, the, the Amazon process of buying where it will maybe at some point be all done online. Um, but you know, that will come with a whole different set of, of challenges and, and advantages, I'm sure. But, um, but you know, it, as far as the real estate end of it, we have been set to do this virtually. Uh, now it's a matter of getting consumers to feel comfortable doing it. Yeah, I, I think I can, I can definitely, I can see it on the listing side. You know, maybe you don't, you can, you can do the listing presentation. 
I, it would be tough. Not we can certainly get there. I, it would be tough to see buying a home without walking into it. That that maybe we will get there. That's it's possible. You never know. Um, yeah. So what about how? So I know you guys have been positioned pretty well. You said with with COVID and all of that. I, I'd be interested to know. You know how are you guys kind of? You know, are you all feeling it? And how are you overcoming some of those those challenges? Because again, it's a very relationship based business. Um, I think you know you've done a great job you know, even before this, doing the videos and, and, you know, maintaining relationships. But, but I, you know, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of realtors, um, probably out there kind of struggling right now. Um, if they, you know, if their pipeline is coming to an end right now and, and it looks like things are starting to open up a little bit, but, but what have you guys been doing to kind of weather the storm? Well, I think, um, in any downturn, in any business, not just ours, the, the, people who are positioned in a, in a way where they can proactively um, get their name out there, keep pursuing relationships and keep nurturing relationships, they actually gain market share. So when there's a lot of fall off, um, the strong, I guess for lack of a better word, the strong survive. So we've had closings, um, we've taken on new listings, uh, we have buyer contracts. Um, but what I would say to all the other realtors who are listening to this is, uh, my favorite real estate coach is Brian Buffini, and he put out a podcast and then he turned it into a presentation to 1.4 million realtors across the country through the conference, which was virtual this year. Um, and he made the analogy of bringing it, he compared it to NASCAR. So in NASCAR, you know, you have a crash sometimes, just like we're, we're having a very abrupt crash it wasn't built up over time it wasn't something like the last recession that uh, was built upon um, poor financial decisions and poor policy stuff like that this was just a sudden crash and so in studying that uh, NASCAR he noticed that over the years when they had a crash initially they would just clean up the track and then say go start again but because it's starting cold the tires would blow the engines would overheat and seize um, drivers would not be ready to, to, to go and because of the drivers, you know, there would be more crashes. So over time they developed what's called the rolling start. So they clean up um, a crash and then they follow the pace car a couple laps, warm up the tires, warm up the engine, the driver gets their head in the game and then the pace car goes away and then you, you go, you know, 300, you know, 200 miles an hour. Um, and that's kind of the situation we're in now for, for agents, I think. Now is the time to warm up your tires. Actually, the last six, seven, eight weeks were the time to warm up your tires, warm up your engines, contact your clients. Most agents, myself included, I'm not, I'm not perfect, have call reluctance. So calling a past client, you may feel like you're bothering them. But in, those in the times that we've just gone through, the perfect reason to call, not talk about real estate, not try to get business, just check in on them. Um, and now that we're coming to the point where we may reopen, Another reason to call them is to um, say, you know, we're, we're back at work, we're back in business. Uh, how's your business doing? How's, you know, hope you, you survived any, any job cuts or sickness, you, you know? So it's a matter of uh, seeing an opportunity and, and taking the time to focus on something that you may have put on the back burner because we get so busy. But now, now and the last six, seven weeks was the time to really hone in on that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's huge, and I think that's where not just realtors, not just attorneys, business professionals, whatever business you're in, is that we get so focused on like the the sale or the close, like right then and there, and then when it's done, it's like maybe we did a really good job, but then we're on to the yeah. next, and you forget like how hard you work to get that one client, that initial client to come in the door, and that one client could talking about referrals, they have friends, they have family. Uh, they could be a repeat client, but we don't do enough to yeah. maintain those relationships. And, you know, a birthday card, actually a birthday card's not bad, but, you know, a, a Christmas card or something, you know, once a year or whatever is probably, is probably not, you know, not enough. And so, I mean, that's what I've been doing the past couple of weeks is just, you know, calling past clients, calling referral sources, calling people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's, you know, there is that little bit of like, are they going to think I'm like calling, you know, and like, I literally don't have anything to sell them or anything, you know, but just come at the place of, no, I just want to call and check in and see how you're doing. And I think that's a huge thing that realtors, you know, and any business professional could be doing right now. Absolutely. And I, I don't want to butcher this quote and I don't know who said it, but um, 
I kind of lived it when I was uh, managing because coming in with all this real estate expertise is great. And I know a lot about real estate and being a realtor. But um, one thing I took to heart was um, people won't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So that I think is a, is a, is a, is a way to kind of wrap up everything I just said about uh, staying in touch with people and, and letting them know that you do care. Yeah. So I want to talk just a couple there. I know you mentioned a, a couple things that, that Compass is doing. And I know when we were speaking about this, you're, you're pretty passionate about the, the tech and everything. And so, so where do you, where do you kind of, I mean, I know we touched on a little bit, but where do you see the industry going? What, and, and I guess specifically, if you want with like what, what Compass is doing, I mean, 500 engineers on staff, that's, they got to be doing something. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, our CEO, Robert Refkin, his firmest belief, and the more time passes, the more I agree with it, is uh, it's, we're in a race right now, kind of like the arms race in, in, in the 80s. Um, whoever invests the most in real estate technology now is going to be the winner in the end. So, you know, we're, we're doing some amazing things using uh, artificial intelligence, which will teach us um, how to better interact with clients. Uh, when do clients want to interact with you? When is a good time to reach out to them? What are their needs uh, based on, you know, your communication habits with them? And also, you know, artificial information to the outside is what, what kind of properties are looking for? What do they not want to miss? And, um, you know, just, and there's internal technology, like the way we communicate with our clients through a CRM, uh, the way we show them properties, which is a really beautiful collection. It's very visual. So the, the tech will accomplish a few things. We'll keep that human connection because it reminds us to call and it reminds us to, to email and it reminds them to send, reminds us to send them the, the happy birthday. Um, and then it will, it will do the rest on autopilot. Not, and I think for any business person, I think that is really the, the most important, um, two of the most important things I would say is automation. Because if you have to think about doing something in your sales process, there's a very good chance you could forget it. You could get, like we said, tied up in the actual work, tied in, you know, working the deal. So the more you can automate, the better. And um, that's one thing. The other thing is I just, I just took actually a, a business economics course and it was very voluminous in the content and, and it was just very, it was a little tedious actually. <laughs> but the thing that I took away the most from it was that uh, in a study of, of, uh, firms and companies pretty much from the beginning of time when there were no firms and companies, the ones who over the long haul succeed the most by far were the ones who invested the most time and energy in research and development, R and D. So on a great, you know, $6 billion company level, that makes sense. But on the small micro level, like, you know, like your attorney colleagues or my realtor colleagues um, is just spend every Pay, pay attention to improving your processes and your techniques. So if each year you can get a little better, by year five, year 10, you're gonna blow your competition away. But you have to make a conscious effort to improve yourself, improve your business, your processes, how you use data, um, and just get a little bit better each time. That's all, that's all. And I could, I could talk business with, I mean, you, you clearly know what you're talking about. I think you, that's what makes you leaps and abounds a lot above a lot of other realtors because you're, you're thinking on a much bigger level. Um, so Compass is, is lucky to have you, man. And, and yeah, we're probably going to have to have you back on the show at some point. Um, thank you so much. What, um, you know, and again, we, we kind of touched on it, but, you know, a couple last questions. What, um, you know, if any advice would you give to, uh, you know, any, any realtors out there either, either uh, new or, or a little more seasoned like yourself, um, you know, either during this times or, or just in general, I know reaching out to referral sources, past clients is big. And I don't know if there's anything else you want to, you want to add or. Um, yeah, there's a ton I could add. We could do a whole other video on that. But one thing I would just caution anybody who's getting into real estate now is that just look at the numbers. There's uh, somewhere between 50 and 52,000 realtors in the, in the Miami Association of Realtors in our, in our area. And maybe somewhere between 1,500 to 1,800 closings a month. So the pie is not as big as it looks. So just really, if you come in with a niche, like uh, the niche I, I have been building and will continue to build, um, I think that is an important way to differentiate yourself from the 50,000 plus competitors. Um, 
and follow up. You know, the, they say the fortune is in the follow up. So yeah. that's that's what I'm working on. And um, like I said, growing my niche, I think, is, is going to be the differentiator. And, you know, I'm going to do a shameless plug here. I was going to say, yeah, please. Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a little, a little guide I published um, called the Inherited Home Guide is really a way to, to get information to the hands of anybody who inherits a property. And they have to make some decisions. This is a way for them to look for uh, information on their own, at their own pace. And if they're ready to reach out to a professional like yourself for, for the probate advice or, or like me for uh, uh, liquidating any of the, the real estate in, in the estate. That's, um, that's what that's for. But I'm also, like I said, making a transition to digital. So I'm going to condense it to maybe about two pages of just the most important things you need to know when you're selling a home through probate and, um, and just put it out there to help as many families as possible. And if they want to work with me, great. If they don't, happy to give information. Awesome. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more on the, on the niche part of it. You know, be and I, I say that to to realtors, to attorneys, to you know anyone who will listen. It's like you can't be um, the go-to person for every single thing. It's just not possible. And even if even though you're not going to be the best at it, you won't be memorable, um, right? You, you got to be known for for a couple different things. And that's a crazy statistic. Only fifteen hundred closings or so a month, and fifty five thousand yeah. realtors. That's uh. That's tough. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, yeah. To just to kind of uh, put a little more detail on it. It's that's in the in Miami Dade County. There's about okay. fifteen to eighteen hundred. Two thousand yeah. is a is a good uh, is a really good month. But you know the count the the agent count does in full disclosure does include Broward County and Palm Beach. Gotcha. It's just an example of you know like I said the pie is not as big as it as it looks on TV. Yeah, still tough. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. Again, check out his his uh, his book on probate. Um, you know, I think that's a great resource for families and probably for other uh, attorneys as well and other professionals. Uh, best way to uh, for people to get in touch with you, find you, and and all that stuff. I would say email, which we can we can plug in here um, at, at the end. I guess we can put, we can put some some graphics on there of the contact info. We can also put it at the bottom of the video in the captions, but. Um, uh, this hasn't rolled out yet, but I will be rolling out a site, uh, probate-brokers.com. So it's, you know, just a, a way to express probate brokers um, for, for just, you know, a di like I said, a digital source of all this information. I think that'll be a good way to connect. We'll, we'll do a blog with videos like this and information and, um, you know, but for now, email, phone, I'll give you all my contact info, share it with all your people awesome. by all means. Thank you, Carlos. Appreciate it, man. Stay safe. And uh, thank you for being on. And thank you so much. It was an honor. My pleasure. Being on here. Thank you so much, Justin. Thanks, man. Bye.